Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Give God praise one more time. Wonderful singing this morning. Thank you, praise team. Musicians, Brother Marvin's coming at this time. Amen. To take us into the next facet of service. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, have you ever flown before? First thing they tell you <clears throat> before you take off, either by intercom or he been on a screen fashion your seat belts we're not going to tell you about the exits because we don't want you exiting most folks already know them when they come to church but we'll tell you to fashion your seat belts make brother prophet Marvin Booth welcome this pastor Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. He's worthy. I call upon the Lord who's worthy to be praised, and so shall I be saved from my enemy. Psalms 18 and 3. Come on, Psalms 134 and 2 said, I will lift up my hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. God, we lift our hands truly to you, for it's out of our hands. God, I keep this service no longer than I have it right now. I give it back to you. I commit it into your hands. You said in Psalms 31 and 15, my times are in your hand. Come on, just lift your voice and lift your heart. Tell him, Lord, I put it in your hands. Come on, tell him that, Lord, I give it to you, whatever it is. Yeah, Lord, I put it in your hands. In your now God hands. Even what I don't understand. Yeah, Jesus. I put it in your hands Hallelujah Lord it's in your hands Psalms 22 16 David prophesied they pierced my hands and my feet from my hands I did bleed it's in his hands Yes it is Somebody lift your hands and think about his hands On that Roman rugged cross See the blood coming out of his hands Hallelujah Whatever's hurting you today Or whatever has hurt you in the past Know today God says then On that cross I took that in my hand Yeah the pain Is in his hands Yeah yeah, the pain is in his hand. Yeah, Lord, I don't have to hurt no more. Cause you took it in your hands, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody shout. The pain is in his hand. So don't keep it. He took the pain in his hands. Hallelujah. It's in his hands. He healeth the broken and hardened. He binds up their wounds. Psalms 147 and 3. He's healing wounds. All in this room. It's in his hands. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God, you said in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give unto you power. Tread on serpents, on scorpions, and over all powers of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Somebody say that latter part, nothing shall hurt you. You know, in 1 Kings chapter 18, Pastor David, it said, I believe it's around maybe verse 43, somewhere there, but talked about the 450 prophets of Baal, 450 false prophets, witches, that's what a false prophet is, a witch. 
and they were trying to get their God, Baal, his attention. And in doing so, according to their way, their custom, they believed they could cut themselves with knives and lassets, and the Bible said blood just gushed out up all over Baal's altar. Then the prophet Elisha came along and mocked them. Elijah did. Amen. He says, where is your God? Is he part of entry? going on a journey, on vacation somewhere, going on a trip? Hallelujah. And then he called on his God, Jehovah. Come on, somebody. And in verse 37, he said, Lord, did you hear me that these people may know you turned their heart back to you again? In verse 38, the Bible said, then the fire fell and consumed the burnt offerings. Come on. And the stone and the wood and licked up the water that was in the tree. Because Elijah said, the God that answers by fire, that'll be God. Well, they couldn't even get their God to answer by wind or water, much less fire. He wouldn't answer. Come on, somebody. But they thought if we can cut ourselves, maybe we can get his attention. We can get this God's attention. You know, there's people, there's a generation, Pastor David, that cut themselves. Hello? They cut themselves to watch blood run out and somehow they think it's doing something for them because they're hurting and they feel that's the only way they can release the pain. Hello? I saw God deliver a cutter just last week in Central Florida where I was at in Revival. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I didn't plan to get up here. Matter of fact, I got two soundtracks. I'm going to sing some old school country, and I know I'm going to sing it. I'm talking about gospel country. I went back to the middle and early 90s when I first started doing this. Praise God. And the Holy Ghost said, do something old school this morning. But before I can go there, I want you to know on an old rugged, come on somebody, cross at Calvary, Jesus was cut all up. He was cut deep. Come on, he gave his back to the smiters and his cheeks that plucked out the hair and he hid not his face from the shame nor the spitting. Isaiah chapter 50, amen, in verses six. Somebody shout, Jesus was cut for me. If you're watching over the internet or you're gonna listen on audio in the future or if you're in this room presently with us here today, I got good news. You don't have to cut yourself. There was one that was cut for you. I'm telling you, there was one on Calvary's tree. He was cut over 2,000 years ago so your body could be healed, your mind be healed, your spirit be healed. You don't have to hurt no more. It's in his hand. He pierced my hands, he said, Psalms 22, 16. Somebody shout, he'll take it. You ain't got to hurt no more. I watched a man probably not much younger than me, showed me his wrist where he said, look where I tried to kill myself. Just last week. Not just tried to kill himself last week, but in the past. And that same man was in the altars giving God glory, been serving God for months now. He said, I've tried to kill myself so many times. He said, but God protected me. You know, Judas, he betrayed Jesus. He blew it big time. Look at your neighbor and say, have you ever blew it big time? And then look at him and say, if you can't say amen, you just blew it big time. So welcome to the rest of us. Yes. I don't care how deflated life has got you, there's an inflator. <laughs> there's a divine inflator. He don't need a fix of flat. Come on, he don't need no green goo. Come on, somebody. He don't need an air pump. I'm telling you, he put life back in you. Here's how he does it. Come on, he breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. And Adam became a living soul. Genesis 2, verse 7. All the while my breath was within me, the Spirit of the Lord is in my nostrils. Job 27 and 3. Look at somebody and do what you've already been doing. I found out, Pastor David, when I tell people to do this, 100%. They always obey, no matter whether they like me or not, because if they don't, we'll have a funeral. Look at your neighbor and go. Now I'm gonna just make sure everybody does it. Everybody just breathe through your nose. I promise you, you're gonna keep doing it. You, you won't rebel on me on this one. Remember? <laughs> Job 27 and three said, all the while my breath was in my nostrils, the spirit of the Lord was there. Now look at him and go. 
Somebody say, there he is. He's not far away. You ain't got to cut yourself to get God's attention. That's the wrong God. Our God cut himself. He allowed them to cut him, to wound him. Come on, somebody. And he's trying with what he did on that cross where he was cut to get your attention to let you know you can be healed at the hill. The hill where he was crucified. Come on, there's a time of killing and a time of healing. Ecclesiastes 3 and 3. 2,000 years ago, it was a time of killing. But right here, it's a time of healing. Yes, hallelujah. Judas, though, when he betrayed Christ at the same time, Peter did too. But Peter, we find him standing up on the day of Pentecost preaching and 3,000 get saved somebody shout they both sinned they both betrayed Christ one run to the wrong tree and one run to the right tree because Acts 1 says that Judas burst verse 20 his bowels out on, on the rock why? Because he hanged himself. Somebody say he hanged himself. Judas went to the wrong tree, but Peter went to the right tree. Let me tell you, suicide's the wrong tree. There's a tree called suicide. It tells you it's the easy way out. Amen. Come on, somebody. The spirit of suicide is a demon, and it tells you if you kill yourself, you'll go to heaven. But 1 John 3, 15 said, there is no eternal life abiding in a murderer. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout, that's the wrong tree. That's the wrong place to go to. Let me tell you about a bloody tree. It's the right tree. It's the cross of Calvary. Somebody shout if you'll run to the crowd. Run to Jesus. You can leave here with life because he's the prince of life. Come on, God's the author of life and he's the finisher of it. Only he is just in giving life and taking life. Job's wife told him, won't you curse God and die? Job 2 and 9. In other words, it would be defined this way. Blame God and kill yourself as a last act of rebellious act toward God. Hello. And he said to her in verse 10, you speak as a foolish woman speaks. I came into this world naked and I'm leaving naked. God gives and God takes away. In other words, Job said God is perfect. God should never be blamed. Psalms 18 and 30 said God's way is perfect. Titus 1 and 2 said he's the God that cannot lie. Somebody shout Jesus never makes a mistake. I don't know why you've had to go through what you went through. I don't know why you've suffered the loss you've served. Hallelujah. I don't know why you were abused as a child and you carry the baggage to this very day and you can't even talk to nobody about it. But I want you to know the Lord has searched you and he knows you. Psalms 139 and 1, and you must understand God's not the blame for evil. My daughter, the other day when I was coming back from Florida, called me on the phone and said, Daddy, at school they want us on a topic, a subject to define where evil comes from. I said, baby, that's easy. Put a D in front of evil and you got devil. Come on, God's not the author of evil, the devil is. Why does everybody want to blame God when evil acts take place? It ain't God, come on. Well, God could have stopped it. God didn't build robots. God didn't make robots, he made mankind. And he gave them the power to make choices. God made up man upright, but man sought out his own devices, his own things. Ecclesiastes 7 and 27. Somebody shout, God made man upright. But man chose to go his own way. And according to Genesis 6, before the flood in Noah's day, the reason God sent the flood to judge the evil was because the earth was filled with violence through the evil imaginations of men. Not God, men. Men corrupt the earth, not God. When man chooses to go the other way instead of the way God chooses. Somebody shout, it's never God's fault. And you won't run to him until you realize that. 
Somebody shout, don't blame God, bless God. That's what Job did. Run to him. He's your help. I'm telling you, he's the only help you'll find. You won't find it at Charter by the Sea, but you can find it at Jesus who walked by the sea. Come on, somebody. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody shout, it's in his head. Yeah, it's in his head. Hey. <laughs> Come on, rejoice with them to rejoice. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. John 8 36. Come on, pray for him, brothers, sisters. It's in his head. To the walls come falling down. I've come to worship. I've come to Run to the right tree. Brother Dave, Brother Dave, come here. God said, what you just saw me do this morning, says the Lord, is your ministry. Lift your hands. God says, because you have walked in that low place. You have walked through that valley. And now I say publicly before all, for I have seen you in secret. And now I say to you, this is the anointing I give you. Even as I took Moses out of that that kept him captive and sent him back to deliver those out of how he had been delivered. I shall send you likewise, says the Spirit of God. In what you were once bound with, you will set them free. From this day forward, you will have a passion to see the depressed and the suicidal and the oppressed free. And my power shall manifest through you to set them free, says the Holy Ghost. Psalms 126.5 Somebody shout joy, 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 joy Ain't a feeling, it's Jesus Come on somebody J for Jesus, O for over Why you? Joy is a person and he's here My God, my God See, y'all may have thought Sister Carmen playing that song, and I had this song I just sang about pain in his hand. We didn't, we didn't discuss, we didn't even know what each other was doing. Hallelujah. Whew. My God, have mercy. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Pastor Dave, they still somebody else. They still somebody else. I'm telling you, run to the right tree. I may not get to do nothing else. I, I don't know, but I, all, I can, all I keep hearing the Holy Ghost say, run to the right tree. Don't run to the wrong one. Don't run to the bottle. Hallelujah. Glory to God, don't run to the peel. Don't run to the, amen, a line of coke. No, don't run to the needle. Don't run to the back seat of that car with somebody you ain't married to. Run to Jesus. Run, 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 run. Run, run to the Lord. Run to him. Psalms 121 and 2 said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills of which come my help, my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. 